So, one thing at this point in the proceedings is I'm astounded that all of this, which is so rich and textured and diverse, and yes, it is all memory. Um, I was walking here and under Martha's strict instruction, I did not prepare anything. Um, so I allowed myself to wonder, what is memory? And as with anything that you examine in such a narrow focus, I had no idea, quickly. Um, and I came up with this. This is all I could think of. Um, as, as memory uh, being a visceral resuscitation of the past. And it's, that's the kind of definition I have to work with because I'm a fiction writer. Um, and just, you know, listening to Elizabeth talk right now, and I, I was wondering about what is faith to memory? And particularly, what is faith to memory that is not your own? As a fiction writer, I deal with this all the time. Um, I'm going to flip back to uh, just a quick little anecdote. Uh, my last book was about an Irish revolutionary named Roger Casement. He was, you know, was a humanitarian. He was a gay man. Uh, he was Irish. Um, he lived in the Congo and uh, worked in Peru. I had nothing to do with that man. Um, and I don't know why this idea obsessively sat in my head. And when I sat down to write about him, I did it, I wanted to do it in the present progressive tense. And this may sound like overly crafty, wonky talk, but and maybe it is. But the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to experience what he did as he progressed through his life without the benefit of knowing where it would go. I wanted to experience that as a way of remembering what it might have been to be this man who also did not know where he wanted to go or what was going to happen to him or you know, if he would have had any regrets. So that's just, that's just one, um, one little piece of it. Is it accurate? I don't know. Is it faithful? I don't know. But when you're writing things of fiction or poetry, you're writing out of some kind of anxiety and you don't know why it's nested in you. And through this anxiety, you're trying to bring out a moment in truth. You're trying to have people empathize with characters who don't exist at all, or who existed in a historical moment, uh, who you have no hope of knowing. Um, and it, in a way, I mean, what does this really have to do with memory? In a way, I think it's because books are almost exact mirrors of memory. You know what, after you've read a book, you know the contents of it, and you put it down. And you say, I know what is in you. And each time you pick it up, it is going to give you the same story, but recreated in a way that is utterly, utterly different. It's that slipperiness in memory. But each time you go back, it's going to reveal not the same truth, but a different truth. Um, it's something that the written word does for us is it creates a falsehood of anchoring. Because when you see a word, you think that word is real, and that word is always going to mean the same thing. But words are not really the thing. They're connected to such a kind of a miasmic, ever-expanding sense of anxiety and emotion and veracity that it's shifting all the time. So do words matter? Yes, they do. And do memories matter? Yes, they do. The complexity of that very simple Thing, just listening to all these people talk about it. I mean, like, how, how does this one simple term, this one simple word, act as a basket for the entire past and our ability to access it? And it's just, it's just a very, I don't know, I have, I have more questions after sitting here and thinking about memory than I did when I walked in. I have learned a lot, and I, I know much less.